Hello. In this lesson, we're going to paint this cute little duckling. I spotted this photograph on Pixabay a few weeks ago, and I just knew that I had to both draw it and paint it. I mean, honestly, what is cuter than a little duckling? I've given you a link to the photograph in the description below, along with all the materials I've used, so you can paint along with me. Here's my workspace all ready to go and I've taped my watercolor postcard to a board on all sides because I'm going to be working pretty wet and I don't want it to buckle. Paper towel, some white markers and a fountain pen with very dark brown ink, some synthetic brushes that have very sharp points and I have this scraffito tool but you can use anything that has a rounded sharp point. My paints which are tube paints that I've spritzed to make them nice and wet and my water is off on the side. For the drawing, I've marked it in the, the little duckling in, in pencil, lightly on my paper, and I've put him off just a little bit off center to give it more dynamic composition than if you put him right in the middle. And what I've mostly done is to try and mark where the colors change. So there's the, you know, the brown markings on the wings and a little bit on the chest and markings on the face. And then I've also tried to mark where the contours change. So there's this lovely uh, fat belly roll here and a little bit of a fat marking at the bottom of the neck as well, so that I can remember later where I need to add some shadows to give the duckling some form. Right, let's get started. For the duckling, I'm going to use a lot of different yellows and some browns and a touch of Payne's Grey and I will mention the colors as I'm using them and I will put the colors that I use in the description below as well. So first up I'm going to mix on my palette some pools of the different browns and yellows. So with this big brush this is cadmium yellow hue. So a big pool of that. This is Monte Amiata Natural Sienna. A raw sienna would work as well. Quinacridone Gold, which is similar to the raw sienna, but a much richer golden color, and it really does glow. So it works quite well for those feathers that will be in the background. Some sepia. For the brown parts, the brown markings, and Payne's grey where we want it really dark. Now what we want to do with the duckling is to make him look really fuzzy like he is in the photograph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the whole duckling and a little bit bigger than the duckling actually is so that I can get the paint to flow out and create those fuzzy edges. So with this biggish round brush, this is an etcher number 12, it's got a very sharp point. I'm going to wet the duckling with clean water and slightly outside the edge. I'm not going to do the beak, but just all the feather part. So not the beak, not the legs. And I don't have to be particularly accurate because the duckling is really untidy. So I'm looking carefully at the reference photo and seeing the areas where the feathers are uh, really fluffy. So not so much on the top of the head, but definitely fluffy here around the neck and the back of the head. A little bit on its bum. Definitely on the little wings and around the belly. So going outside the, outside the lines for those. And what I'm going to do with the color is I'm not going to drop it right to the edge. So I'm going to, while I've gone the, gone with the water outside the lines, I'm going to paint the color inside the lines and let the color bleed out to that uh, edge of the water. So starting with the cadmium yellow, I'm just going to carefully drop it in and let the water carry it out, outside the lines that is. Just looking at the reference photo to see where the yellow is on the duckling and yes I am exaggerating the colors a little bit because because that's more fun than just sticking to the all, all the neutral tones that are on the duckling. Now 
changing to the quinacridone gold colour and dropping that in. There's definitely an a uh, very golden mark here near the beak. And then the areas that are, I've left, I can use the raw sienna. And it's okay to leave some white areas that are highlights as well. While it's still wet, before I add the dark brown marks, I'm going to use the end of this uh, scrapito tool. It's got a, th a very sharp end on this end and a more rounded one on this end. And I'm just going to scratch in some marks and pull some feathers out. And try and keep these as random as you can. And I, doing this, it's much easier to get a fine mark than you could by using a tiny brush. When you scratch like this into wet paint and you create marks inside the paper, the paint runs into those little dents and it might not look really obvious while you're doing it at this stage, but later when it's dried, you'll definitely see how the, you've created a lot of texture in your ducking. I'm still keeping an eye on the paint. I want to drop in the brown while it's wet, so I'm working fairly quickly so that I don't get it all dry uh, before I come in with the dark brown. So now while it's still wet, changing to a smaller brush. This is an etcher number three and changing to the sepia color to drop in where I've marked with the pencil where the brown part of the duckling is. Now this first layer of the brown is going to bleed into the yellow we are going to come in later and add some sharper marks, but we, what we want now is everything to be nice and soft. So the wings are fairly dark and he's got this lovely dark markings along the chest and along the back of the head. And this little wing as well. tiny bit here along the belly and along the bottom of the belly here and then these lovely masking sort of like wet like he's wearing a mask along his head now if you get an area like that where you didn't want the brown to bleed into just clean your brush Dry it on your paper towel and you can lift that color out. And you might have to do it several times, so clean your brush, dry it, and lift it out. And we, yes, we are lifting down to the white, but we can always add in a little bit of yellow there later if we want to. So that's our first layer done and I'm going to let it dry. Now I'm not going to dry it with the hair dryer because the paint is going to still be moving naturally for a long time. If you use a hair dryer at this stage, you just stop that movement. And uh, the preference at the moment is for everything just to bleed naturally. We're going to come in with a second layer where we sharpen things up. So patience now, probably a good time to have a break. Back and the duckling is completely dry now. And the first thing we're going to do is try and exaggerate some of the form, particularly here in the belly and around the cheek. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift out some, some of the color from the paper. I've got here a cheap cat's tongue brush, but a cheap flat brush will do. What you're looking for is something that's fairly stiff and not too expensive because you're going to rub quite hard and you're going to wear the brush out eventually. So what I'm going to do is with clean, absolutely clean water, I'm going to wet the brush. Dry it just a tad and then find the areas which I want to highlight. So this area here is already quite highlighted, so I'm going to exaggerate it a bit more. So there's this area and along the chest a little bit. 
all I'm going to do is gently scrub the paper and lift out some color. Continually cleaning my brush and drying it and gently lifting it out just to create a little bit of a highlight here that's on the chest. Again, looking, I'm looking carefully at the reference photo as well. That's done. We're going to come in now with a second layer to darken up the brownish areas mostly. So again, with this smaller uh, synthetic brush, it's got a very, very sharp point and the sepia. I'm going to work wet on dry now, so I won't dampen the whole duck. I'm going to come and dry on top and just put in some little feathery marks. And I'm just flicking them in and that's okay if you leave some white areas because that adds a bit of sparkle. The duckling's quite shiny. And looking carefully at the reference photo all the time. Keeping your feathers going in the direction in which they grow. So these ones grow downwards, these ones go in the opposite direction. You could have your your Scrifito tool ready to pull things out again if you want to or if you have very good control and a very good brush you can just do that kind of thing with your brush as well now while that area is all still wet I'm going to come in with some darker and lighter colors as well to create a little bit of interest in that area so it's not just solid brown so looking at the photo, there's definitely an area here which is more golden in color. So back to the quinacridone gold. And put in some little feather marks. And now, it, ide ideally, if you're working fast, you can do this while the, the, the sepia color that you've added is still wet. But it's not really serious. If you get, if this all dry, it doesn't really matter. And now with the paints grey to make it darker in the areas that are really dark, so along here, along the bottom of the wing, and definitely down at the bottom of the neck. The feathers are not all one colour, so we want to make sure that we keep it natural by varying the colour of the feathers. So some of them are brown, some of them are quite a greyish colour, some of them are golden. I'm going to leave it to dry and then we can come in and do the feet and the beak. For the feet and the beak I'm going to carry on using this little brush and I am going to use the same sepia and Payne's grey for the tops of the beak and the dark parts of the legs and I'm going to add a touch of a pink so if you've got permanent rose I'm going to use quinacridone rose uh, just in areas where it's kind of fleshy I guess the, the the feet are a little bit transparent through the web so and along the bottom of the beak it's a slight pink color so starting first with the brown mixed a little bit with Payne's grey and we're going to go in quite light to begin with. So the top of the beak for that mixture. Oh, it's a little bit dark. Let's go a little bit lighter. top of the beak and there's a tiny little bit of brown along the bottom as well and then the feet same mixture and what we want to do with the top of the feet where they go into the feathers is to do some negative painting so just drag your color get your point nice and sharp drag your color into the feathers so it looks like the feathers are overlapping the feet you can use your Scrifito tool for that as well. And 
I'm just leaving a little bit of a white area there so I can add that as pink later. And the same on this side of the foot as well. It's got a little bit of a claw. I'm going to use this graffito tool to drag this in as well here just to set the foot into the so that it doesn't look like the foot is just stuck on afterwards. We want it to look like the feathers are going over, over the little feet. This foot here. Leaving that top area there to make it pink. then with the, oops, this graffito tool, let's drag it in to the body. I'm going to use quinacrylone pink, also quinacrylone rose for the pink. And just add a touch of sepia so it's not so shockingly pink. And drop that in. Feel free to change to a smaller brush if this feels a bit awkward to you. And then again for the bottom of the beak as well. Quite the right shape, so I'm just going to fix it a little bit. Time to let it dry again before we come in and do the ground and the shadows and finally the pen work. Completely dry now, and what I want to do is give the duckling something to stand on. So back to this biggish brush, and I'm going to use the same uh, sepia paints gray mix, but I'm going to make it slightly on the grayer side just to add some contrast to the duckling, but nothing too shocking. So still the same colors. And what I want to do is I want to exaggerate this heaviness of keeping most of the composition on this side. So I'm going to start the ground here and just keep it on this side. Nothing too complicated. Just some rough marks, mostly closely close to the duckling. So that looks like he's casting a shadow. And then a little bit off on the side as well. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to add some life to the postcard by just adding in some splashes. So back to the cadmium yellow. And a bit of the quinacrylone color. Again, I'm keeping it mostly on this side, keeping the composition mostly on that side. And some brown. I'm going to let it dry again, and then we can come in and do the shadows on the beak. I dried my little splashes with the hairdryer and some of them have mingled into each other which is kind of cool and some of them even went into my ground which is quite nice. It looks like a reflected colour like he's standing in a puddle. And I like to add the splashes to something that's uh, essentially not a static thing. The, you're hoping that the duckling is actually moving and by adding the splashes I feel like it it's like he sh was shaking himself and that there's some golden spray of water around him. Right, time to just tighten up a little bit of shadows on the um, beak and on the feet. Again with this tiny brush and the Payne's Grey. You could change to an even tinier brush if you are not feeling confident with such a big one. And just looking carefully at that reference photo so there is 
a little bit of shadow where the beak comes into the face and along the bottom of the beak above along the bottom of the top beak you should could, could say and along the bottom of the bottom beak and that's pretty much all we need to give the beak some form and then just tighten up the feet can be quite dark and then while I've got this darker color in I'm going to come in and just add a few of the feathers really quite dark just to give some form so particularly here along this side of the wing and there's some quite dark wet ones here along the belly little bit of sparkle with the white and then with this fountain pen I have a very dark uh, permanent brown ink and we're going to put in some of the feathers and we're going to finally do the eye and he's going to really come to life and now that I'm feeling brave with my pen I can add in the eye now remember the pen is permanent so you have to go in with confidence so start off nice and slowly nice round eye and it has a teardrop on each side and leaving a highlight give him a bit of a twinkle and then because we don't want the eye to be just completely solid make sure you set it in a little bit with some feathering around and we're done I'm going to use the hairdryer to heat up the tape before I pull it off and then we will get be ready to sign it so I've drawn myself a little pencil line to sign my name because I'm notorious for getting it skew. And it works well with the composition to sign on this side. But you could also add a personalized message in this area if you're really good at calligraphy or some sort of pen work. That would be very nice as well. All that's left to do is probably to seal it with some acrylic varnish so that it can survive the mail your note on the back and your stamp and send some love to someone until next time happy painting ciao